So right there, that's where we're logging. Right where that that kind of juts down. I'll put a circle in it. And that piece of land is on that whole mountainside all the way around. So I was just getting ready to get come out of here with this uh with this hitch right here. And uh I spotted something off to my right that looked kind of interesting, so I'm going to go down there and take a look. So, what we got here is some chaga. See that black growth on this yellow birch? That's uh, a fungus called chaga. And uh, if you don't know about chaga, look it up. It, uh, it's got some health benefits. But uh, I'm not a medical professional, so don't take medical advice from me, consult your doctor. But there are known health benefits to chaga. So I'm about to harvest this chaga. So, so I've cut the chaga off the bottom one. Here's where it was. See right there? Now that'll grow back to another big piece of chaga in a few years. So you'll be able to come back and get some more off this tree. There's, there's what I got off of that. And there's one right here. And I'm gonna give that one a shot and see if I can get that one off as well. So, a quick little uh, a fact about chaga. So, you wanna harvest a chaga that is on either white birch or yellow birch. Because actually it derives its uh, medicinal properties from the tree. I think it's the sap in the tree. It does grow on other species as well, notably beech, but it doesn't have uh, as much medicinal value.
what we got here is we're uh we're uh, done in the woods for today and uh i decided i'm going to uh, change the oil on this skitter so i figured it'd be a good time to walk around and do a little talk about the skitter so what we got here is a uh, 1988 John Deere 640D cable skitter. They made these with grapple and uh, they would be a 648. And uh, the thing about the D, the difference between the D, there's a few differences, but one of the main differences between the D and their straight 640 model is this parking brake right here. This thing is what makes the skitter. Because before they never had it, this is like a hydraulic parking brake and uh, it's released when it has pressure. So if the skitter dies and it loses hydraulic pressure, the parking brake automatically comes on. It's just a much, uh, much better system than the previous ones. They made the 640D, I believe from uh, 1985 up to uh, 1990. And they switched the styles and, came, and the E, the bigger, more square skitters. The E weighed quite a bit more. So this is like this is one of the best skitters, in my opinion. Everybody has their opinion, right? That uh that John Deere's ever made. Because it's power to size ratio, it's it's still light and, and fairly nimble in the woods, but it's got uh plenty of power. And that power comes from this uh this engine here. Let me get this door open. So we got here, uh, this is a 6068, John Deere 6068. It's an older 6068, not, in a, not a metric one. It's the same motor as the 6414 with a little more power, probably because the injector pump or maybe a better turbo. But uh, yeah, this motor's got plenty of power for this size skitter. And uh, so back when I first bought this skitter, probably about five years ago, no, I didn't buy it from Nortrax. Uh, I just come off a good winter. And uh, we were pulling by the thousand, but for some reason we were able to make money there. I had a, a 1989 640D and a 540B. I still have the, uh, the 89 640D, but they both had problems. The, uh, the 540 was... Uh, the motor was had had a lot of blow by and is on its way out i've since sold that skitter i rebuilt the engine and uh, sold it to a friend of mine it's, it's running good and then my 640d my other one came from uh down south huntington alabama and uh i picked it up down there but uh it, it was already beat somebody had pieced it together it was parts of a grapple and parts of a cable skitter and uh, the transmission gives me a lot of problems. I still got it. Maybe I'll uh, try to solve some of them problems this year. But uh, I come off a, a fairly good winter and uh, I uh, wanted to buy a different skitter. So I looked around. I found this one and uh, the price seemed like it was all right. The financing terms weren't that great. But uh, I bought it, ran it for uh, a summer and, and part of the next winter, and then uh, suddenly it had tons of blow by. You couldn't even uh, you couldn't even uh, drive up through the woods because the fan would blow the blow by right out the front, and then you'd choke on it. Here, I'll show you. This start of the engine here. Yeah, because that stuff, that blow-by is just really nasty smelling. <laughs> Steam and I don't know, whatever. So yeah. So I ended up, the blow-by comes out right there. Right down out of this tube. And that now that means your rings are gone. Or you got a compression leaking into the uh, into the crankcase somehow. So, uh, yeah, and most likely the rings. So I ended up putting a, a pipe, a hose here, right out down that hole in the bottom. So I could drive it up, but I only went up a couple times and decided I would uh, would, would be done for the winter. So we got done early that winter, and uh, that was a tough winter. 
didn't make a lot of money and then hide this so i uh ended up pulling the motor out myself because i couldn't afford to to have somebody rebuild it and i never rebuilt an engine before but pulled this out bought an aftermarket kit and rebuilt the engine it runs good it's been uh yeah probably about three or four years now probably 2,000 hours on it i haven't worked it too hard but uh yeah so this so another features of the of the john deere's that i like is the uh the power shift eight transmission it's an eight speed forward and uh it's got a, a pedal for a clutch but it's really an engine pedal the pedal uh it cuts off the uh hydraulic pressure to the clutch packs and that way you can you can use it like a clutch but this is kind of like a uh, cross between a direct drive and an automatic it's got the best of both worlds ease of operation like an automatic but it's kind of like a standard and it's indirect drive you could stall this thing out put the blade against the tree and let the engine pedal clutch everybody calls it clutch but it's an engine pedal there is actually a clutch in here too for cold weather but let it out and it and it's no if your transmission's good it should stall your engine or push a tree over depending on the size of it but yeah and so this one here it's got 24 5 32 tires on it which i'm not a big fan of these tall tires they're tall make the skitter a little higher it can go up over stuff you know it'll, it'll, it's got more ground clearance but you got to climb up in that so i pr much prefer 23 126s but you know the price of tires i can't afford to change them so then i had bought these chains here and these are ofa and you know they're they're fairly nice chain but the problem with this style chain is as it wears the link starts to fold over like this so then you're not really getting a good bite i mean these ones aren't too bad yet keeping them tight definitely helps and then i bought these style here i think last winter or the winter before these ones are chineseium they're, they're knockoff ofas they're called u-grip because you see how this is welded underneath the link so as you're driving along it holds it like this and it keeps uh keeps the, these both bite and uh it's a much better style chain but i get what i can afford i guess so yeah you know the somebody at some point had uh had welded these fenders on here i don't even know what they came off of looks almost like a tree farmer color but i'm not sure but these are uh, are definitely nice because john deere never had a w big enough fenders in the back far as i could ever tell because without these your hitch is always you got a big hitch it's always banging into the tire so yeah that was a nice thing somebody did and uh they put this whale's tail on here i didn't do it it came like this and this thing's real handy when you're pushing trees over for uh you can just back up and push them over but sometimes i wonder if it puts a lot of stress on the skitter and on the arch itself because when i first bought this skitter this arch was all coming apart broken all right in here and the bolts were all loose so i uh i welded this in and put uh welded nuts on the underside of here double nuts and then uh, bolted it down so that way the bolts would hold and you could take the arch on and off and another weak point on these 640s is right here this whole area where the rear end bolts in somebody welded this plate on way back and then i had a lot of problems with it it broke all along by those by those bolts it's all broke broke up into here it's all broke here so uh i ended up uh having to uh to weld this plate in and then these big gussets and yeah that was right in the middle of the winter couple years ago because the rear end was about broke right out of it and then same thing on the other side but not as bad for some reason so i haven't put welded any real gussets in there i just had to do a little welding all right in here broke all out right there but yeah that's a weak point 
And another weak point with these skidders is the whole center pin system. They're not really rugged enough for the amount of power that the skidder has or the size hitch you can pull with it. So uh, I've had, I've changed that. It's like a ball in a socket up there. I've changed that, changed the bottom pin. It's wearing out again. But uh, yeah, one of the best things about this skidder is this winch right here. This is a massive winch. It goes way down, down into there. You see that? It's like a 40,000 pound line pole, I think is what it is. Don't quote me on that. I'm just off the top of my head. But yeah, these are a much, a huge improvement over the uh, 540B here. Even the 540D has the same winch as the 540B, which is a real piece of garbage. And uh, these also have a, a feature, I call it half drag. I don't know what anybody else calls it. It's about a thousand, thousand pound drag. You release the cable part way and it holds about a thousand pounds. So it lets you hitch down slowly which is a nice feature of this uh, this winch. I don't even know, John Deere, I don't think they even make this winch. I think it's a Lufkin. But uh, yeah, don't quote me on that either. But yeah, anyway, so you know, that's uh, that's the 640D. It's not a bad skitter. I like it. It gets around good in the woods. It uh, has plenty of power. I'd like a newer one, but I wouldn't like the payment on it, I don't think. Anyway, I'm going to do an oil change on this and uh, maybe I'll record that and throw that in. I'm not sure. I'm going to uh, do an oil change on this, I guess. I'm going to try to use it to show it on the camera. We'll see what we get. But yeah, you, as you can see, the wind is blowing. Stuff's dripping. Not a pleasant job, but it has to be done. is isn't like we're going to get Jiffy Lube out here to do it. So I've kind of hopefully put out the tools that I need, we hope. And I put this tarp down to try to stop from getting totally soaked, but eh, she's dripping, so. Yeah. So yeah, we have to uh, first remove this. See if you can see that. So we have to first remove this skid plate here. So in order to get at the uh, the oil plug. So we'll do that first. And then we'll go from there. Bolts 15 16. on for this or at least one because this the skid plates on a it hangs on a chain and there's a hinge in the back but you know don't want to have it come down on your face so right now it's hanging on a chain See how that works. It uh, hangs off that chain and it'll make it easier to install. So there's the oil plug. Eh, she's dripping a little oil. These old engines usually do. So we'll uh, we'll get the oil out of her and then uh, we'll go from there. Don't trust that too much. There we go. Got to turn it. So 
I've loosened up the oil plug, so I should be able to turn it by hand. And I got this bucket, five gallon bucket here, with the funnel to catch the oil. So let's see how this all goes. One thing with the uh, funnel, you have to start picking up on it or it'll fill up. Your oil's about out of it. If you do it like that with the funnel, you'll want to remember to pick up on the funnel as soon as, as, soon as the oil starts coming down into it because it'll get air bound and overflow. But uh, yeah, so we'll put the oil cap back on and then the oil plug and uh, put the skid plate back on and go to the top side. <coughs> All right, she's hooked in. We've got the skin plate back on. Catch it in the camera. So now, gonna go top. the oil filter right there so I'm gonna change that and there's the oil fill and we'll fill it up there I'll probably change the filter off camera because it's gonna be kind of hard to uh to hold the camera and do the filter change I usually fill the filter up with oil clean oil before I screw it on there I don't know if it really does any good or not but it, sound, it, it seems like a good idea to me anyway so I filled up the filter with uh, clean oil now we're going to install it, maybe with this camera here, we'll see. Well, she started. A little slippery oil on the side of it. There, hopefully that won't leak. Now all we gotta do is fill it up. All right, so I'm gonna check the dipstick, see if we're all good. Have you ever changed your oil and forgot to put the drain plug in and put the oil in? I think I've done that a time or two in life. Yeah, we're in the good. And we should, uh, nice clean oil. So we'll try it, start it up and see if we got oil pressure. Make sure we don't have any leaks. Clean this filter off. 
and be able to see if it we got it tight enough. If we don't have it tight enough, she'll be leaking. Or if there's a double gasket, but I've already checked that. I've done that a few times in life too. Well, we've changed the oil and uh, let's uh, fire up, see if we've got some oil pressure.